Uh, I was given the task of um, speaking to this subject of uh, theology informing missiology. It's a tough subject. Uh, it's something which we probably can uh, say is easy, but when you start looking at uh, what has gone on uh, in terms of the, the theological uh, education, uh, institutions, and uh, missions, then you get to uh, see that uh, actually uh, it's not that easy. Uh, I've written on, on this, uh, it's a 13-page uh, article, uh, which uh, I think later on it, it will be made available uh, to, uh, to us. I don't know how uh, Dr. Rogers will, will work on that. But um, what I'm going to do is I'll be referring to the article and uh, my presentation notes uh, so that uh, we, uh, we know what, what, what I've, I've uh, been thinking about. Well, uh, God's mission and theolo the theological academy. The, these two uh, are inseparable. God's mission is uh, something that the academy needs to uh, sub submit to. So my key word in, in, uh, in the article is submission. We as theological educators need to know and appreciate and, and, and actually grasp what God's mission is all about. For us to uh, 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 embrace uh, God's mission, and that will help us in, in our uh, work as uh, theological educators. Uh, we know that uh, uh, our, our academies have got uh, mission programs and uh, so on. But, but my, my emphasis in the article is that uh, there has to be um, uh, a holistic approach to God's mission in our programs. Uh, you cannot separate or demarcate these programs and say, hey, we're only having uh, so many courses of missions and uh, the others, uh, it's about Greek, it's about uh, you know, Latin and whatever. All our programs need to have this perspective of uh, God's mission, even as we're preparing the students to, uh, to, uh, to go and labor uh, in the mission field. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, approach this subject this way. Uh, God's mission uh, should be grasped from the foundational uh, text, which is Genesis chapters 1 to 3. And there we see... Uh, God uh, actually uh, 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 revealing uh, what his mission is about. Of course, we have the creation story there, Genesis 1 and 2, and then 3, we have the story of the fall. And it's in, in chapter 3 where we have the Proto-Evangelium, uh, where now we see that uh, uh, God is going to redeem man God is going to seek this fallen man and he is going to uh, redeem him and uh, bring restoration. And so we see that uh, being very, uh, very clear there. But the theological educator needs to um, work hard, labor, and model the need to grasp the word of God as it relates to missions. And I've referred to uh, Colossians chapter, chapter 3 and verses 16 and 17, uh, where we read Paul instructing um, the, the um, believers, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, and admonishing one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with thanksgiving in your hearts to God. Whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks through him to God 
the Father. So even as we talk about uh, God's mission, we need to be about grasping the word of Christ richly. You know, there's a poor way of grasping the, the word of Christ. And as long as we don't have that, that good grasp of the word of Christ, then missiology will really be like an ordinary work. Just something to do as Christians. To go out and, uh, and evangelize and, 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 and make disciples. But hey, there's this thing about richly, uh, richly, richly dwelling, the word of God richly dwelling in us. And it's my, it's my submission to you that this thing about God's mission, which others call Monsieur Day, of course, you know that, uh, it, it, has to be, it has to be grasped by each one of us, that God is on mission. And we are all about uh, glorifying him, even as we join him in mission. Now, this is where the uh, need for sound theology comes in. How does theology inform missiology? Okay, there's been a debate in the past about missiology because you don't find the word in the, in the scriptures. Actually, it comes, it's a hybrid term. Uh, it's, it's, it's from Latin and, uh, and Greek. You know that. And because of the nature of the word, some people have, have wrestled with it and uh, said, hey, uh, maybe missiology is an addition. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of uh, something else we need to do as Christians. No. My submission is that uh, missions, as we have heard this morning, is uh, from the scriptures. The Great Commission emphasizes that uh, we are about making disciples. And I, I, I appreciate Dr. Lawless's uh, uh, emphasis there. And we are about making disciples even as we go. But let me add to uh, what Dr. Lawless said this morning and say, many times we think about going like a location. Okay, that's true. We have to relocate and do the missions out there. But the other thing about going is lifestyle. The lifestyle of the believer, the ethics, our conduct. And here in Africa, my brothers and sisters in Africa here, that's very important. We're having all these uh, uh, you know, mission trips and you know, missional uh, efforts and so on. But people look at us. Who are we? Do we really, do we really uh, represent the Christ? Or we are just, uh, you know, just saying we are Christians. And they need to be Christians too. So our conduct, our conduct even as we go, is a very vital part for the African. We are having all these, uh, uh, you know, scandals being reported about missionaries in Africa and so on and so forth. Well, it's time for us to show the authenticity of the gospel by the, our conduct. How we carry ourselves on the mission field. So the need for theology is uh, very, very important in the seminary, the educational establishment. And we need to uh, really emphasize on uh, uh, sound theology. In my article, uh, which I wrote, I, 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 used, I, I refer to uh, Paul's word to Titus. And you recall Titus uh, was um, uh, a disciple uh, of uh, Paul, just like Timothy. And uh, having been under the feet of uh, Paul, uh, he was discipled to, uh, to uh, emphasize on, on, on sound doctrine. If you read Titus, you find that that word comes up again and again. Sound doctrine, sound teaching. Now, why was it so? Well, when you go to the island of Crete, you will recall that uh, that island was uh, affected by uh, the civilizations of the Mynesians, and uh, that civilization and other civilizations had uh, really impacted the culture, the culture of the people there. And Paul says, actually he quotes one of the, uh, one of the, uh, the poets there who says, uh, 
They are called liars. They are, you know, it's a characteristic that was uh, well, well known about the Cretans. And Paul says, I planted you, I, I, I placed you on the island of Crete so that you may bring organization to the church at Crete. And that organization was going to come through sound doctrine, communicating sound doctrine. Well, the word sound doctrine uh, is about, uh, you know, um, uh, bringing health to uh, a body that needs health. Body health. And, 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 and the teaching uh, of the gospel, the truths of the gospel, would, would have to be emphasized to the Cretans so as to bring about a healthy church. And so this, this also ties in with our academy in the sense that uh, Titus, having been uh, uh, tutored by Paul for a number of years, was able to communicate sound doctrine. So you, the theological educators, you have these trainees, people training under, under your feet for three years, sometimes four years. We are about modeling. Modeling to them and emphasizing sound doctrine. And our churches can only be as healthy. These, these trainees will go out there to the churches. And our churches can only be as healthy only when these trainees will be able to communicate sound doctrine. Now, uh, like I said, um, the foundational truths of, for mission, God's mission can come from Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3. And in this, in this text, we see uh, God creating and God uh, blessing uh, uh, our four parents. And we see there God also seeking Adam and Eve when they sinned against him. My emphasis on sound doctrine as far as the academy is concerned, is that we need to, to, uh, to, to, uh, to emphasize God's mission. He not only created us, but as fallen beings, he seeks us. He seeks us. He's about seeking us. He takes the initiative to come to us. And we know this. We preach about it in our uh, sermons every time. That God uh, so loved the world that he gave. And the word for giving there, didomi in Greek, is about a superior reaching out to an, uh, an inferior person. And so the sovereign God reaches out to us, his created uh, people who have sinned against him so that he may restore us to the place where he wants us to be. And so, sound doctrine, sound theology, has to embrace this fact in our academy, that it is God actually who is seeking us. He's, it's God who is coming to us. We need him. We are poor. And without him, we're nowhere. And so we see that to be the case here. Here in Africa, I know we have these, uh, and uh, uh, we have, we've, we've had a lot of literature uh, talking about uh, the African theology. We have uh, many of these uh, theologies, which seemingly may be seen to be competing against uh, Christianity. And uh, uh, these uh, monotheisms, may be seen by many to be competing against uh, Christianity, but we need to emphasize from the theological academy that there is only one sovereign God. All these uh, uh, monotheisms, they cannot, they cannot match up to our sovereign God because he is sovereign and he 
he is uh, uh, the one who comes to us. God is the authority. Now, here in Africa, let me talk to my brothers and sisters here in Africa. At least from where I come from, we have this thing about authority. And as Africans, we really uh, respect authority. We have these uh, chiefs, paramount chiefs, senior chiefs, uh, these landlords, and we have to submit to them. Because if we don't do, then uh, if, when, if we don't do that, then uh, we find ourselves not to be at peace. And I think uh, talking about common ground, when we talk about common ground, this is a good place for us to uh, help our trainees in the theological academy that, hey, we have one who is in authority, and that is God. That is God. Um, so we, we can use, and I, I, let me use um, uh, Dr. Mburu's, uh, I think she's written on, uh, on uh, African hermeneutics. Uh, maybe some of you have read that book. Uh, quite a wonderfully written book. But we, we can use that common ground and, 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 and uh, help our trainees to say, hey, when we go out there, let us emphasize the fact that God is sovereign and he is the authority. And so over missions, God is the commander. He's the one who sends us. He's the one uh, who tells us to go. Um, so we, 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 we need to uh, embrace that in our theological uh, education. But another thing that we get from the text, the Genesis text, is Adam and Eve, after they had sinned, they now find a way of uh, protecting themselves. And so they sow uh, these uh, leaves and cover their nakedness. Well, that's narrative. You know that, that genre there is narrative. But the principle we get from that is that there is this thing in man, fallen man, of trying to uh, please God and, 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 and to still continue in life. And we find that uh, this effort really does not please God. And so we see in the Genesis text of uh, God providing a cover for these. Uh, instead of the leaves, he, he slaughters the animal and, and they are able to uh, they, they are covered that way. With God's provision, with God's uh, intervention, they are able to continue in, uh, in, uh, in life. Well, uh, we, need, we need to emphasize this to our African brothers and sisters. There are so many gods that they, they hide in. The issue of syncretism is alive on this continent. Very much alive. Never underestimate this. There is this issue of the power encounter among us. And so uh, we need to emphasize the fact that, hey, uh, God is the one who, who is able to provide what I need for life. My eternity depends on him. Not these other gods, these shrines that we go to, whenever we're in trouble, the same people who come to our church and shout the hallelujahs and amens, because of that trouble, they go to compromise and embrace the gods. And so, sound theology here, we need to emphasize this in our African educational institutions. That when we say it's God, it's God, and not these other gods. Not these additions of, of the powers that can protect people. But we need to emphasize that uh, God is uh, sovereign. Uh, I'm blessed, in, uh, we are blessed in Zambia that uh, some of our graduates 
at the seminary where, where we are, um, they, have, they have been able to uh, write dissertations uh, on, these, uh, on, on this same subject. And talking about Dr. Mishek Zulu and uh, Dr. Ezra Musonda, I think we know them, they've spoken here before. And if you read their dissertations, they are talking about this very thing, about uh, syncretism, about uh, compromise. And in my, um, in my article, I've emphasized the issue of uh, us needing to submit to the context of mission. So we submit to the God of mission. We submit to the, the text which talks about mission, and Dr. Lawless has talked about that, Matthew 28. But we also submit to the context of mission. What do I mean? What I mean here is we need to have the eyes, spiritual eyes, that see in the dark. This sin darkened world. As we submit to our God, he gives us this insight in this spiritual darkness that we were engulfed in these days, and we are able to read into it and, 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 and minister to the people who are in this uh, sin-darkened world. Like the sons of Issachar, who were able to read the times. We need that in Africa today. We need that. Nehemiah, when you go to Nehemiah chapter 2, you find that Nehemiah is sent to go and repair the walls. But notice in that text, he took some time by himself and uh, he went to the wall and he started, you know, uh, looking at the brokenness of the wall by himself so that he could appreciate better what the mission to rebuild the wall was about. Many times we spend our time in classrooms doing theology. But in our theologizing, do we have a place for our trainees to know what is in the world outside? Because that's where they will go after their training. Or do we wait for them to, uh, first of all, learn, and then after graduation, that's when they go out and have these encounters on the mission field? Well, I submit to you that uh, we need to know the mission field, wherever we are. And you, my brothers and sisters in Africa, you know what I'm talking about. Because we come from communities, we come from families that are wrestling, spiritually wrestling with these forces of darkness on an everyday basis. So when we talk about power encounter, they need to know the greater power in Jesus Christ, who is able to overcome all these uh, spiritual powers of darkness because of what he did on the cross of Calvary for us. Let me spend just, uh, I don't know how we're doing on time here, uh, uh, just a few moments to talk about uh, Christology and mission. In my article, I do emphasize the need for uh, the theological educators and the trainees to have a good grasp of the uh, Christological passages. You know, those passages which talk about the nature of Christ. Those passages which uh, uh, refer to uh, uh, who Christ is. Because based on... Uh, how we grasp these passages, it will go a long way in us depending upon the Christ in missions. You see, the Christology that we have 
uh, sometimes, sometimes leaves us uh, with questions as to whether we look at him to be uh, the authority in missions. I'm talking about passages like Colossians chapter 1, 15 to 20. Jesus Christ is what? Everything. He's everything. Whether you talk about uh, creation, he's a source. Whether you talk about the resurrection, he is the first one to rise from the dead. And so he is everything. He is everything. We need to embrace that. But when you come to John chapter 1 and verses 1 to 5, you find Jesus Christ being revealed as the Word. He is the Word. And in my part of the world, we have the Jehovah's Witnesses who have really made a lot of compromises on this one. And Jesus Christ is referred to as a God. Not God himself, but he is a God. But he is the word of God. He is divine. He is, uh, he is the one who has the last word. And then we have uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. And there you have Jesus Christ as revealed as the representation of God. He is the, the representation of God. And then, of course, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5, uh, five to, uh, to 10. Jesus Christ is the humiliated and the exalted Savior. Now, these passages are very important for us as far as missions because uh, many people do not uh, uh, submit to, to, uh, to uh, the authority of Christ in missions because they don't embrace these passages as they are revealed in Scripture. Now, um, submission to the text which I referred to earlier is important. Even the Matthew chapter 28, many times we begin from verse 18, but in my article, I say let's begin from verse 16 for us to get a grasp of that context. Jesus Christ tells them, the disciples, to go to a place and be gathered there. They were familiar with the voice of Jesus because he's the chief shepherd of these uh, disciples. And some doubted, some worship, but they knew his voice. So the God-ordained place is where they went. That was the authority. And based on that, Jesus Christ comes to them and say, go ye therefore. Go ye therefore and make disciples. You see, the disciples did not, did not have a, an issue with going, baptizing, and teaching because they knew the nature of Christ. He was their authority. He is ours here in Africa. Do you hear me, Africa? Are we here, Africa? Yes, he is our authority. And whatever we do in missions, we have to do it because he has said us. He has said it and he has sent us. And so uh, this is my emphasis here that we need to uh, submit to this God of mission. We need to submit to the authority of the text. We need to submit to uh, the mission, uh, the, the, the context of our mission. I've quoted, and let, let me end here by saying this. Uh, I've quoted, um, uh, there's somebody who has written about uh, theology in uh, the public place. And Agang, Agang is the name. Um, and I like, I like his uh, contribution because sometimes we think about theology uh, only being uh, like within the local church context. But hey, the members who come to our congregations, they are public people. So as we, as we, uh, as we obey the church, as we serve the church, we know that 
members of the church will go out into the public places. Agang, Agang uh, uh, says this. He says this. What Africa needs is not just a Christian theology, but a Christian theology that is concerned with all aspects of human knowledge, understanding, and faith in God can translate into a deep commitment to building a better society, one which is uh, strong in faith, love, justice, and wisdom. And he says other things, but I'll, I'll stop there. But what we see here is that uh, as we think about missions, as we plan to do missions, the theology that we have needs to be sound to our students, among the professors, of course, knowing that eventually the students will be leaders in the, in the local church and they will impact society wherever they are. I know we come from different backgrounds. And you have these uh, figures in your church and, and, and so on and so forth. But eventually, we have that task of uh, theolo uh, theologizing that will impact our society. Well, our theological education needs to be holistic. It needs to be holistic. Um, Dr. Lawless uh, mentioned the aspect of uh, uh, social ministry a little bit. And uh, here in Africa, that's the thing that we're really considering these days. We need to impact our communities with the testimony of who our Lord is and help them to live daily lives depending on Christ. In my article, I quoted uh, Ott. He says, uh, we need to have a holistic theological education an integrated theological education. And he says, mission integrated theological education requires a fresh understanding of God as a missionary God. Missio Dei. We need to appreciate that. He says, mission integrated uh, theological education requires a clear vision of the church in mission. We need to have this clarity. We are joining him. We're not just doing missions for the sake of programs in the church, but we're joining him in doing missions. Ott continues, he says, mission integrated theological education requires a clear understanding of the mission and task of theology. There is a task for theology, which uh, uh, others have written on. I'm uh, talking about uh, Tite Tienu, who is one of us. Uh, he wrote something on that. Uh, we have people like Biancato. Uh, if you read those, those works, you, you have clarity as to uh, how we should uh, uh, theologize in our context. We have Adeemo. Uh, uh, and I think our Nigerian brothers will clap for that. Yeah? Um, we have these uh, who have written very well on these uh, subjects that uh, th there's a task for our theologizing. And finally, uh, Ott says, mission integrated theological education requires a clear understanding of the task of theological education. Well, brothers and sisters, we need a sound theology for our academics. We need a biblically sound theology not a syncretistic theology. That's what we fight with here. I mean, in Africa, that, we're talking about our, our, our fight here. It's syncretistic. And when we're pressed to the core, 
we tend to rely on these other powers. But we need a sound theology that will impact our trainees for Christ. It's up to you. It's up to me. But I'm going to end by asking that we, uh, again, like we did uh, last time, we, we consider two questions uh, that will help us uh, to think about how we're going to uh, uh, theologize. And one of the questions is, many Africans place a high value on belonging to a community. Such affinities like the Ubuntu philosophy, uh, we are, therefore I am. I am because we are, right? That's a very, very strong force among us. So such, the, such affinities like these pose challenges and opportunities to missions of the local church. Well, let's discuss the challenges and opportunities and explore ideas pertaining to what theological institutions need to consider in training that will address the challenges and opportunities from, uh, from a biblical perspective. So we'll do that. I don't know how we're going to do it, but um, we had two questions. But Okay, the other one we can discuss is, let's discuss what should be the preferred model for theological education. Should institutions adopt a wide focus, developing various programs for all kinds of ministry like chaplaincy uh, and so on, uh, these roles inside and outside the local church? Or should the training narrow their focus on equipping leaders for the local church, who will in turn equip and send out members for their congr uh, congregations in different uh, great mission roles? Should it be a narrow down training, you know, uh, for the local leadership in the church, uh, hoping that when they now get it, they will now uh, uh, go out uh, doing the Great Commission? Or should it be all embracing? Uh, or both? We can, we can consider, hey, let's, let's do it. Let, let's do both of these. So let's discuss these, and uh, we can do the same uh, in the groupings that we... Let's start with question number one. Uh, how, how did the discussion go? Uh, please feel free. When you raise your hand, uh, Dr. Rogers will come and give you the microphone. Yeah, let, let me just read. Someone from the chat said that Africans value so much family, belonging to the biological family and to the church as a family of God is a real challenge to African Christians. Theological education should take this challenge in account in their training programs. That was uh, Director Alabwe, who was in Espata. Okay. Someone else have an answer for question one? C can someone read question one for us? What was it again? Yes, sir. Thank you. My name is Abraham. And looking at some of the challenges, I believe there are many challenges within the very first question. But the very f the, the first challenge that my brother and I identified uh, is the ability to hide within a group, within a community. Yeah. To begin understanding that, we should look at, did Jesus come to save a group, or did he come for individual people? The instructions given about mission and, and sensitizing about people about Jesus Christ are given to individual group people within groups. Okay. But within the system of the Ubuntu, there is a possibility of hiding behind what others are doing and shifting that responsibility to that group and escaping from doing that as an individual person, given the responsibility of telling people about Jesus Christ. In the Ubuntu group, we can say, if so-and-so is doing it, I am there for also doing it. Yeah. When you are just sitting down and doing nothing. Right. That's one challenge that we realized in there. Okay. Okay. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Anybody else? There is a hand. Oh, okay. 
Yes, um, I think the challenge is really that we are facing mostly in uh, Africa and uh, our communities. It's exactly the same what he says because we most of the time hide behind the perception of Ubuntu because when you approach a family about the gospel, then they will tell, no, we, we are okay. Because when my neighbor is in need of such, such, I'm able to share with him. Therefore, the gospel that we are bringing is not going to make any difference. We are already Christians. Many people, they hide un, uh, under Ubuntu, a perception as self-righteousness right. and uh, uh, that is a religion. They feel they are okay. They not, don't need Jesus and yet that is religiousness. Okay. So I just wanted to echo what okay. you Thank you. Thank saying. you, sir. There's a hand right there. Oh, in here? Yeah, we'll get to you, sir. Clayton Alexander Mauritius. Um, Far be it from me to, to speak on uh, Ubuntu as a philosophy. I'm not Nguni, but I am an African, and I ma have made my home among Nguni. Mm -hmm. And so have a sense of what Ubuntu is, and what I hear being described is not necessarily a problem of Ubuntu because they exist. those problems exist in white cultures as well. Um, and so then for me, I think there are aspects of Ubuntu that might be redeemed and have a redemptive quality for mission okay. um, in that and and so I think then the, the problem I'd phrase the problem differently I'd phrase the problem as us actually not uh, mission is hindered by us not living out the ideal that Ubuntu represents because if we were representing Ubuntu as a Christian community taking the redemptive qualities of Ubuntu and applying it to, to, to or what can be redeemed in Ubuntu um, and applying it to Christian society, then I think it would enable mission rather than hinder mission Amen. when we are saying we are in this together yeah. and uh, I'm with you, you are with me and the work that we are doing together, I can't go with you but I can certainly support you as you go. I think that for me seems then to be the problem because I think African churches are not as united as we would like to think they are. So there is not enough Ubuntu is for me the problem. And here amongst the group we actually discussed some of the African traditional churches like for example uh, ZCC. The immediate image I have that comes to mind um, when I think of ZCC, is a million South Africans trekking to the north of South Africa to go to the Easter conferences. Or men in their hundreds dancing with white shoes to, to, to choruses. And so there I see unity. And so our lack of Ubuntu hinders mission by limiting us from going and limiting us in our going, but also at the same time, limiting us in terms of the impression that people have of us as the evangelical church on the African continent as being less Ubuntu than we should be. Okay, thank you very much, brother. So we have opportunities coming up there. And I, I, those... Okay, we can give one more, I think, our brother here. Uh, he raised his hand earlier. Only because it's Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Raymond. Uh, I would like to problematize the term theology, I think first and foremost, uh, before asking the question, how does it actually influence our, missiolo our missiology? Uh, when you use the term theology, it needs to be clarified. Uh, are you using the notion of Western theology or a theology that is biblically informed by and from the West? Uh, I think that's important. I think if we want to do theology in Africa, we need to ask how does an African evangelical theology inform uh, missiology. Yeah. Because if we're just doing theology, then we are suffering from double consciousness. 
the notion of uh, Du Bois perspective that we see ourselves through the West rather than through Africans. Of course, I think that must be clarified uh, going forward. Okay, thank you. All right, we can go to question two because of time. Yeah, we, question we, we two. Summarize. Discuss what should be the preferred model for theological training. Should institutions adopt a wide focus, developing various programs for all kinds of ministry roles inside and outside the local church, or should the training narrow their focus on leaders for the local church who will in turn equip and send out members from their congregations in different GC roles? Questions? Or, I mean, contributions? Any contributions? Questions on this one? Thank you. To me, I look at uh, Christ's model to be the best when it comes to areas of training. Christ himself focused so much on the few who are called, and they're the very one who impacted the whole world. So I would believe Christ's model would be the best for our theological schools, and those who are training must be called to impact the world. Thank you. And my idea on the first question is that it's a challenge to all of us. All of us belong to a culture. And I believe when our major challenge is identifying our cultures with the word of God. And when the word of God penetrates a culture, it purifies it and brings the best value out of that culture. Okay. Thank you. Okay. There was a hand uh, from that Yeah, before, before I go to that, let me just mention uh, on question one, mm -hmm. someone said some opportunities of Ubuntu spirit, this is from the chat, as concerns missions include fellowship and solidarity in the local congregation as an extension of life in the family and or community of origin. I think that's um, what goes along with what Clayton was saying. Um, there's the ability for the missionary or church to, re to reach entire families through individuals from a particular community. The challenges, though, could be ethnocentrism and tribalization of the local yeah. church, yeah. possible solutions from theological education, teaching trainees about the biblical perspectives of tribality and ethnicity, teaching trainees uh, corporate Christology. And then on question two, someone said, theological education in Africa must address the relation of Christians to the ancestors in light to their relation to Christ, how to understand Christ so that they can help to view him as the true savior and not the ancestors. Oh, okay. Um, yes. Hey, uh, I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, we have to try to integrate both uh, approaches of training people because we are realizing in our communities, there's a lot of things that we need to address. Yeah, and uh, if you look at the, the, the major, uh, maybe the, the, the purpose of the church uh, within the missions, there are a lot of things we need to address. So let us not just make it too much narrow, but let's just to see the great need in Africa. But also going back to the first one, uh, I think the main issue here is that whether Ubuntu or no Ubuntu, the main problem is who God is. Yeah. So whether West or African theology, whatever, if we miss who God is in our missiology, because my understanding of theology is understanding who God is. Right. As we are saying that God has authority right. over, every, right. over everything, and as they said earlier, God claims everything. Right. So I believe as we are doing mythio missiology and theology in Ubuntu communities, all these challenges that we see arising from Ubuntu way of looking at things, we need to make it clear to them that God is the total authority over everything. And we make an opportunity that Ubuntu must be must prevail as we see in the book of Acts that all people were sharing together. That's where we see Ubuntu today. 
they were selling their things and they were sharing with each other. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. There was a hand on this side earlier. Oh, even here. Okay. And uh, finally, we'll finish up with that corner there. Yes, quickly. Moses speaking. I, I, I like to know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Um, I like to note that we are in a generation where people are clamoring for specializations, but we must be very careful. Uh, we have different phases of ministry. Many theological institutions are introducing new programs, new approaches, and too many diversities that will be difficult to manage and control in a short history ahead of us. Uh, and therefore, we need to go back and take the cue from the model of Jesus, have a defined purpose, uh, which is mission, mm -hmm. and with the various arms of ministry that comes under that, mm -hmm. and ensure that we, we train a group of people that will go out and do a greater expression of ministry with the understanding that the Spirit of God is at work and he will lead and guide into other specifics that we cannot touch. And so theological education must focus on the basic principles, not on strategies. Uh, principles that are applicable everywhere in the world and that can be translated into action uh, as the Holy Spirit lead and guides. Thank you, brother. There was one, was it behind la, you? La, la, this is the last one. So the whoever one. wants to fight for the last one. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, our facilitator. What I still want to add to all our people have been contributing is that, as uh, the last speaker has said, principles will not change. But strategies will need change. And any strategy we need to adopt must be strategy that will land us uh, in an area of every uh, church relationship. And that is very important. But where am I going? In terms of the second question, there is an aspect there that we must not joke with. Equipping leaders. Jesus came he raised 12. He worked to an extent that uh, he raised another 70, whom he used to make the dissemination of the gospel uh, effective among the people. And at the same time, this Jesus model was what Paul adopted when he was speaking to Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 2. Verse 2, where he says, that which I have given unto you, go and share it with trusted people. And that is very, very important. The focus of our work here, as we have taught us today, is that we must look for, uh, we must not undermine the necessity of equipping leaders. They are the faith actors who will help us to give the right teaching to the followers. The moment the leaders got it wrong, the old misleading theological dissemination will continue to raise its ugly head. And that is what I've seen in what you have presented today. That Thank you. We must take that model of 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2 as a way of uh, getting resort at this dispensation. Thank you. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. Can we clap for Dr. Mosono, please? <laughs>